New streamer bot's trigger system is finally in stable release. So, it's time to show you how to work with it. Good evening, everyone. This new system is a huge improvement, although some people want everything back. But we are not these people, so let's check it out. First, quick overview of the changes. First thing you will notice that there is no events tab under each platform tab. Now it's called triggers, and they are accessible right from actions tab in special triggers area. Each action can have multiple triggers, and more important, same trigger can be attached to multiple actions. No more dances with actions wrappers. Of course, when you have so many triggers, it will look a little bit cluttered. So before we had a lot of subtabs, now it's transformed into a bunch of submenus. But at least you can pick your favorites by right clicking items and just ignore the rest. So it will work for now. Good news, everyone! Ability to disable sub actions and triggers which you do not use is already in alpha. So we just need to wait. And if you decide to remove something from favorites, you also need to use right click. You can enable and disable all triggers at once. You can even copy them from one action and pass them into another one. Neat. And of course, delete them. The most important thing is that you can create your own custom triggers and trigger them. You can create them in UI and in C Sharp code, but they can be triggered only from C Sharp code. I hope it's also a temporary limitation. By the way, Am I the only one who thinks that this custom in custom is a little bit confusing? I think it will be more intuitive if it was labeled like create new, because it's what it actually does. But maybe I'm just crazy. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this. Another cool feature is StreamerBot Starter Trigger. So if before, to start any script with StreamerBot launch, you had to write C-sharp code with a special init method, and check it as precompile on application start. Now you can use this trigger and run any action without any additional coding. Almost all triggers give you an option to create a corresponding criteria right from the trigger menu, so you don't have to jump from tab to tab. What I would also like to see is the ability to open for edit already selected ones. And finally, if you press this question mark, it will show you the tree overview of all triggers which you assigned. Here you can see source of the trigger, its type, name of the connected action, and criteria of a trigger. This update is a complete rehaul of the events system. So I understand why some people feeling lost or even rejected, but it's actually a big and great step forward. So we just need to get used to it and spend some time with it. And this is exactly what we will do right now. Let's see how to use main triggers, starting from timed actions. To select trigger, you can click this plus button or just right click on trigger area and go to core timed actions. Here you can select one of already created or create a new one using this button. It will open usual create dialog. The same logic applies to chat commands, voice commands, channel rewards, and several others. Speaking of channel rewards, now you can create an action which can be triggered on any reward. Some require first to create something, and then you will be able to select a criteria. For example, triggers for OBS or WebSocket server and client. Also with this kind of triggers, you have two options. Trigger on any criteria, or on specified one. With OBS, it will populate this list of events depending on your WebSocket version. OBS connection itself is in old place, under Stream Apps tab. Some triggers got min and max values, for example cheering or donations on Twitch. You get several options. Leave it empty for triggering on any value. Set only min field then it will be triggering on any value greater or equal than value, set only max on exact value, and set both on inclusive range. That will do for the main triggers. They work pretty much as old events and are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's move to some new ones. You could have noticed this strange test trigger. 
It's basically a test button. Before, the simplest way to test anything was to connect a hotkey. But if action required some arguments, you need to add them using set argument sub action. This trigger is simple replacement for this. You just add it, fill in required arguments and trigger it. And you will get arguments inside your action. There will be even better way to test your actions and triggers. Simulate event. Right now it's available only in alpha version. If you also want to see cool features before release, you can go to StreamerBot Discord and grab yourself a beta tester role. You will get access to beta builds and special beta chat, where you can leave your feedback. And if you want to participate in even earlier stage, you can go on Nate's Patreon and subscribe to Silver Supporter tier or higher. You will get access to alpha builds and support the development. Next trigger is global variable updated. As you might have guessed, it triggers when you update global variable, persistent or not. In the arguments you will get old and new values of selected global variable. Is it persisted or not? And the time of the update. Next is process start stopped. You can specify the name or just listen for all processes and filter it inside the sub actions. Easy way to find the correct name is to set criteria to any, start your app and check the variables. You will need this name variable. Next one is an usual one. Toast activation. No, it will not connect to your smart toaster and notify when your toast is ready. Unfortunately. It triggers if you click on notification toast created by corresponding sub action in StreamerBot. Be aware that this functionality works only on Windows 10 and newer. Here we got bunch of triggers for crowd control. I don't use it so I can't say much, but they are pretty self-explanatory. Elgato and service integrations also. If you really need a deep dive into some of them, let me know in the comments. I will make a separate video. Now let's look what's new in Twitch section. Now you got integrations with better TTV and 7TV extensions. Everything else is the same. In YouTube we got new subscriber and new sponsor triggers. Now it's time to look at the custom triggers. To create them you get two options. Via UI or C Sharp code. To create it in UI you need to right click in triggers area and select custom. It will prompt you with the trigger name. But it will just add it as a trigger to current action. If you want to use same trigger somewhere else, you will need to do it each time. Or copy paste it. To create them via code, you need to create a C-sharp code sub-action. Where you will place the code which will register it. There is a new method called register custom trigger. It requires three parameters. The name which will be displayed in UI. The name of the event which you will use to trigger it and the name of the UI submenus. Then you need to run this action so code gets executed and you will get your triggers under custom submenu. But there is couple limitations. First, custom triggers can be triggered only from C# -sharp code, no matter how you created them. And second, the code which registers your custom code triggers must be run each time you start streamer bot or you will not see them in your menus, although the triggers itself will work. Here StreamerBot starter trigger come in handy. You just add this trigger to your action and they will register on each starter. Also for testing purposes, so I don't have to restart StreamerBot each time. I add init method, which just calls execute method. Then you can just use compile command and it will register them. But be careful. It doesn't unregister the old ones. So if you change the name or submenu of a trigger, you will get them both. Now, to trigger custom trigger created via UI, you need to use this method, trigger event, where event name is a name you gave it in UI menu. There is actually the second parameter, which by default set to true. It's responsible for passing arguments from color action to curly action. To trigger one created via C# -sharp code, you will need trigger code event method, where event name is a second parameter from the register method. It also got same second parameter, 
so you can control will it pass arguments down or not. Also, there is a second version of this method. It accepts a dictionary with string as a key and object as value, which overrides default arguments dictionary. I think it will be enough for now. And I hope it was useful for you. Nate did a massive amount of work to give you this update. I hope he will take a good vacation. I had to rewrite the script several times and delay the video. He was pushing updates one after another non-stop. So please, give us some time to digest it. Also right now, there is a lack of documentation for this new functionality. So better concentrate on that. Now as always, go please the algorithm. Have a good evening and bye bye.